What's up, fight fans? This is Kurt Deville with Counterpunch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Big George Foreman. George Foreman admitted to having a troubled childhood before convincing his mother he wanted to join the job corps. He began boxing as an amateur in 1966, posting a record of 21 and 5, winning the 19. 68 National AAU Championships and the Mexico City Olympics gold medal stopping the Soviet Union's Jonas Chipolis. In 1969, Foreman turned professional and won his first 38 fights when in Kingston, Jamaica in January of 1973, he upset the world by beating Philadelphia's smoking Joe Frazier, which was 29-0 at the time, in two rounds. In Foreman's second defense, he stopped Ken Norton, 30-2, in Caracas, Venezuela, in March of 1974. His former trainer, Eddie Futch, told me in F Joe Frazier's gym in Philadelphia that he refused to work the corner of Norton for this fight. In Foreman's next fight in October, he was upset by the former world heavyweight champion Muhammad, the greatest Ali, which was 44-2 in eight rounds in what was called the Rumble in the Jungle in Zaire, Africa, in October. Foreman didn't fight again until January of 1976, in which was considered the fight of the year when, behind on two cards, he knocked out Ron Lyle, which was 31-3-1 in the fifth round for the vacant North American Boxing Federation title. In June, Foreman again stopped Frazier in the Nassau Coliseum in five rounds. He scored five straight stoppages after losing to Ali when he fought another Philadelphia boxer named Jimmy Young, which was 25-2 in San Juan, Puerto Rico losing a decision being knocked down in the 12th and final round. In the dressing room, lying on the table, form, Foreman, in what he referred to as a religious epiphany, is a vision of Jesus Christ he retired to eventually become a Baptist minister. It would be 10 years when Foreman made a comeback in March of 1987, winning 24 straight 23 by stoppage before losing to world champion Evander, the real deal. Holyfield, which was 25-0 and 0 by decision in Atlantic City, New Jersey in April of 1991. Foreman would go on to win three straight before losing to Tommy the Duke Morrison, which was 36-1 and 1 for the vacant WBO world title in June of 1993 in Las Vegas, Nevada. 17 months later, though losing this fight, he got another chance at age 45 in knocking out world champion Michael Double M Moore, which was 35-0 and in the 10th round while being behind on all three scorecards. Foreman would defend his title in April of 1995, defeating Germany's Axel Schultz, which was 21-1-1. and by disputing by disputed majority decision. Shortly after this fight, he would be stripped of his title, refusing to give Schultz a rematch. In Foreman's next two fights, he defeated Crawford, the Terminator Grimsley, which was 20 and 0 in Tokyo, Japan in 1996, and Lou Salvarese, which was 36 and 0 by split decision in Atlantic City in April of 1997. In what would be his final bout, he lost a disputed majority decision to Shannon the Cannon Briggs, which was 29-1 in Atlantic City and retire at the age of 48. His final record was 76-5 with 38 stoppages. Foreman would be inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame and the International Boxing Hall of Fame. He would go on to become a ringside analysis for or analyst for HBO for 12 years, his promotion of the George Foreman 
Grill sold more than 100 million units worldwide in 1999. He sold the commercial rights to the Grill for 138 million. Foreman is a father to 12 children, including five sons who were all named George. What a roller coaster career for the former world boxing heavyweight champion. That is a short and cut version of George Foreman's career. And with honor, I would love to counterpunch George Foreman. Um, George Foreman, to me, was a very dominant force in two different eras, okay? When in the late 70s, okay, he was, he was the, the boogeyman. He was the guy, the young, new kid on the block, very strong, very powerful, very American, okay? Despite what was going on at the time, the Texas native was knocking guys out that wasn't accustomed to getting knocked out. He was stopping guys that were taking out legends or at that time, very good fighters like Muhammad Ali, okay? The guys that he defeated, he, not, he snatched the belt from Joe Frazier, okay? Joe Frazier had beat Muhammad Ali in one of the best fights in 1971, but he didn't stop there. He beat the guy that also beat that guy, Muhammad Ali, which was Ken Norton in devastating fashion as he unlocked and ripped uppercuts to Norman's face, giving him no chance but to retreat, retreat, and retreat, okay? And then he goes in and has an awakening against one of the fighters that is regarded as the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali, and that which ultimately popped his bubble, which he was stopped in the eighth round by the greatest, okay? In Zaire, Africa, one of the biggest comebacks in recent history, okay, for Muhammad Ali, which making him the guy to be admired and feared. But don't take your eye off the prize. There were other fighters like Ron Lyle, which George Foreman knocked down and came back himself in round five by stopping him, okay? Then he restopped, Joe, uh, Joe Frazier again in 1976, okay? And in 1978, he lost, of course, that decision, which caused him to have a religious awakening to see um, his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which he became a preacher for 10 years. So after that, you imagine 10 years from 1978 um, to 1988, he was preaching, you know? Um, he was regarded as the punch and preacher at the time. I do remember Joe uh, George Foreman. He was a lot bigger. He had developed the Alfred Hitchcock-like gut, right? And, you know, he had the fro was gone. You've seen a ball-headed, bigger guy. George Foreman still hit like a tank. He was slower, probably like how we see Joe Joyce now, you know, welling these big, heavy shots, okay? And I look at... Uh, George Foreman as a guy that had something to prove. And guess what? He did that. I remember sitting with my father watching uh, Michael Moore. Outclass, outbox, outwork George Foreman. And we were joking about it. Actually, we looked at it in disbelief. My father, which is actually the same age as George Foreman, you know, was pleading like, hey, what's wrong with this guy? He's my age. Why is he still fighting? Why is he doing what he's doing? And in the 10th round, he showed us why he was doing what he was doing by knocking out Michael Moore. Okay. Um, the Axel Schultz uh, fight, though, when defending it was very controversial. A lot of people think that Axel won. Okay. And, um, and but then yet he was stripped of that title. But nonetheless, he didn't supposed to have that title being 45 years old, eight months to 46 or four months to 46 years old fighter that no one gave really a chance to. OK, and then, of course, karma happened in uh, fighting Shannon the Cannon. OK, and Shannon the Cannon actually 
people thought that George Foreman beat Shannon the Cannon, but Shannon the Cannon actually got the decision. So that's how that karma was. Then came the lean, mean, fat reducing machine. And let me counterpunch that moment. When that particular device came out, people, I was one of the first people being a true diehard boxing fan like I was. I was probably 140 pounds, 147 pounds at the time. Yes, I was a welterweight. And I lived and died by it. I put beef, I put weenies, I put all I could on there, pork chops, whatever I could find. I threw it on the charge on the George Foreman grill and it was charred and it was nice and tight. And I seen all the juices run out of it. So that was all the bad stuff that put all, clogged your arteries. So I always promoted that, okay? And I used it for years. Actually, I still one have I still have one in my house to this day. <laughs> so, you know, that was a great comeback for George Foreman. <clears throat> and it just shows you that you never know what you're going to get when you keep pushing forward. And it's a it, it, this is a lesson to everyone that thinks that just because you take a couple losses, it doesn't mean your career is over. You know, when you keep going, when you believe in yourself, when you believe that you can do these type of things, you can make a difference. And if it wasn't for that belief, people, it, we wouldn't know who George Foreman was. George Foreman would just been a fighter that used to be a badass back in the day. And then what else could we say? Bars. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think of George Foreman's career, um, where he started, and he's still here. Bars. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys been Counterpunch. Peace.